Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, much appreciated you uh, sharing a little bit of your day with me to watch the video. Always uh, very thankful for that. And today we're going to cover what I consider the most important part of fishing a chatterbait, and that's the type of retrieve to use on a chatterbait. Without a doubt, I think by far the, the biggest thing that separates people from catching fish on a chatterbait and guys that struggle with it is they just don't know all their trees. So I'm going to give you the five basic retrieves that you want to use with a chatterbait. Talk a little bit about those. But real quick, just a couple weekly housekeeping tips. Just wanted to remind you guys, if you guys haven't had a chance, go over and check out fishthemoment.com, our lake map breakdowns. We got maps all over the country every season of the year. All the big lakes broke down for you. Also, we can do, on request, we can do personal map breakdowns of, <clears throat> you know, the lakes that you fish a lot that you want some info, even if they're like a thousand acres. So check them out at fishinmoment.com. And also, just a weekly reminder, if you guys want to help support the channel here, one of the best ways you can do it, besides subscribing to the channel, is become a member of the channel. Uh, members get additional videos every week that aren't seen by the public, access to my personal email address for your fishing questions, um, so you can go to the, uh, <clears throat> just go to my home, my YouTube homepage, click on the about section and then click on the intuitive memberships for that info. <clears throat> okay, guys, let's talk about the retrieves here. Um, we're going to be talking about chatterbaits a little bit here. We've been talking about them because the, we're getting into chatterbait season. You know, the early pre-spawn is when they start biting them. And there's a lot of variables to chatterbaits. You got your sizes, you got your colors. But the main thing with them is you have how you retrieve the bait. Because I don't know how many times I've seen it where you get into one area where there's a lot of guys fishing and everybody's fishing the chatterbait. Say you're fishing offshore grass and there's lots of people in one area and everybody's throwing the chatterbait. Normally there's one guy that catches them and nobody else catches them because they figured out the right retrieve. And there's basically five retrieves. I think a lot of people just throw a chatterbait out there and reel it in. And yeah, you can catch them like that once in a while, but if you learn these retrieves I'm talking about and figure out the ones the bass want, you're gonna go a long way of just, you know, tripling your success on chatterbait. The first one I wanna talk about is the pull, is the chatterbait pull retrieve. This is a retrieve where you throw the chatterbait out there, you let it hit the bottom, and then once it hits the bottom, you just pull your rod tip like that and take up the slack. So almost like a, a football head jig. You know how you drag a football head jig? That's a key retrieve on a chatter, chatterbait that not many people use. Throw it out there, let it hit the bottom, just sweep it about two or three feet, take up the slack, and sweep it. It works the same. It's the same effect that, uh, you know, some type of a football head jig works. That's one of my favorites. The second one is actually my favorite that I'll talk about, and that's the pumping retrieve. So this, guys, I've probably caught more fish pumping a chatterbait than any other way out there. And what I do is I throw it out there, let it hit the bottom, keep my rod tip high, and I'll just lift the rod tip up like that, let it sink down, pop the rod tip, and I'm wanting that chatterbait to go up there about two or three feet and down. So just pump it up like that. And this works really good if you're fishing around grass beds. You know, if you have grass that's maybe a one to three feet above the surf, above the bottom, pumping a chatterbait is a deadly way to catch them. And both of these techniques, the pulling and the pumping chatterbait, they tend to work a little bit better if that water temperature is a little bit on the cool side, sort of like in the low to mid 50s is when the pump and pull works. The next one is, um, this is what I would consider uh, the average, what the average angler does with them. That's just the steady stop and go retrieve on a chatterbait. So you can catch fish just throwing it out there, reeling it in steady like that. But the, the, the uh, main thing that you wanna do is throw your chatterbait out there and start reeling it and reel it at a steady pace and then just stop your reel handle once in a while. Then start it up again. Crank it three or four times, stop it again. And every time you stop it, that chatterbait is just going to fall a little bit. And it's sort of like a jerkbait. It's sort of like when you pause, jerk, jerk, pause a jerkbait. It's the same concept when you use a steady stop and go retrieve. They've got to be pretty aggressive to hit it, just reeling it straight in. But if you just give it that little pause, just like this, boom, boom, stop it just for like a second, sometimes that that'll generate the strike. And this is probably the most um, universal retrieve that most people would use with a chatterbait. And it's pretty effective too. The next one is what I call burning the chatterbait. Now, a lot, of, not a lot of people do this, but burning the chatterbait is really effective when the water temperature is a little bit warmer and if you have a little bit clearer water. 
There's been a lot of tournaments, one burning a chatterbait. It's sort of like the same concept of a lipless crankbait or burning a spinnerbait. Normally what you're doing when you're burning a chatterbait is you're coming over some type of ambush point. A lot of people like to use it where they've got grass that's barely into the surface. They'll burn a chatterbait like that. Or if you're reeling it like next to a boat dock, next to some type of a stump, a lay down, you know, some type of an object where they have to <coughs> actually come out and uh, create a reaction strike. And that's what they're, that's what burning a chatterbait does is it creates a reaction strike. There's been a lot of situations <coughs> where you can just can't get them to bite. You can't trigger those fish to bite any other way than that burn. And a lot of times with the burn, I'll also use a fast burn and stop and go retrieve like that. And it's been, and another thing about burning guys, I'll tell you one thing, burning a chatterbait will catch big ones. When those fish are in the right conditions, burning that thing will work. I, I know, I think when, when Rick Clun won that St. John's tournament several years ago, when he had the 30 some pound bag, I think, remember reading, he caught, he was burning them. And uh, if you hear it every year, guys win tournaments burning them. And the final thing, the fifth thing, is what I call slow roll on the chatterbait. Um, this is the same thing as like slow roll on the spinnerbait. Basically, you're casting it out there, let it hit the bottom again, and then you're just reeling it steady, stop and go retrieve, trying to keep it as close to the bottom as you can. You're not pulling it like you do on the pull football head retrieve, but you're actually wanting this bait to keep moving constantly, barely off the bottom. You know, and it doesn't matter if the water depth is three feet or if it's 20 feet. The slow rolling techniques is you're trying to fish it down the contour of your fish. And say if you're fishing a 45 degree angle bank like that, you throw it out there, you reel it, you stop it just long enough for that bait to fall back down. Try to keep it close to that bottom within like a foot of the bottom. So anyway, guys, that's the five. You Probably a lot of you guys did not know there were five retrieves. It's the pull retrieve, it's the pumping retrieve, it's the burning retrieve, the slow roll retrieve, and the steady stop and go. Mix it up. You know, if you're not catching fish on the chatterbait, change up your colors, change up your head size. Definitely change those retrieves up. And the retrieves, I, I gave you guys some foundations for it, but basically the retrieve is what the fish want that day. A lot of times weather patterns will depend on this. If you've got a south wind or a north wind or some temperature variations in the air and water, that can dictate that. The retrieve is all about the mood, metabolism, and the personality of the bass. So a lot of times it's just an experimentation, but incorporate these five retrieves into your arsenal of your chatterbait fishing. I promise you, you guys, it'll take your chatterbaits fishing up to the next level. So anyway, guys, hope you all enjoy the tip. Much appreciated, and we'll see y'all later.